Yeah, I think uh, experience that we had in North Carolina was great um, for our somewhat young team. I think we have a, a good combination of um, youth and experience coming back. Um, I think anytime you get a result at Carolina, um, it's a very hard place to play. That, uh, that gives you some confidence. Um, I think the challenge for us was to obviously bounce back and play against the number four team at Duke uh, in that way. And I thought we showed at times that we could do that, but uh, we're walking away with some really good learning experiences. And that's gonna be important because um, LSU is a very good, exciting team. And I, if you're in the area on Thursday and you wanna see a good soccer game, I think that'd be a good one to come out and see. Yeah, Paula, you mentioned the learning experiences. What did you learn maybe about your personnel? I know it's just two matches, but about your personnel from those two? Um, I think the biggest thing is uh, their willingness and their ability to defend and together collectively the group. We talked about that, you know, soccer games are moments. And I think in that Carolina game uh, that they were on every moment. And I think that makes the difference between winning and losing. And, and obviously, Carolina is a very good team. And you have to not take a second off. And they show that they can do that. So we talked about after the game that that was the standard that we needed to bring. Um, and then I think in the Duke game, we, we saw the moments kind of come out. And as a coach, you look at that and say, you know, you're playing two top 10 teams back to back in 90 degree temperature. Um, and with a lot of youth on the field. So for me, you know, I think we, we can look at that Duke game and say, okay, now these are the moments we have to be better in. Um, so I'm excited about where we're at. Um, I think we're not even close to the finished product. I think we're gonna do way better on the offensive side once we get our feet underneath us a bit, but our team has been proven that they can defend. Just one, one went away from the 300 mark. Just what does that mean to you, that career milestone? And how much do you think about that? What do you think about that at the start of the season, being so close to it? Um, I'll be honest, I don't think about it at all. When people bring it up, I, I cringe a little bit because um, it, it's, I'm focused on this team and what they're doing. Um, and I always say that the 300 wins are a reflection of all the players I've had over my career. It's, it's not me. Um, my famous saying that I say to most of my players is, I'll never score a goal, I'll never make a save here. Um, I just put them in the position to do that. So um, for me, uh, it's a monkey that I don't like that's on my back and everyone keeps talking about. Um, because again, I just want them to get better from game to game to game. And um, I want this season to be good. And I think we have a very good squad that can do that. And so I'm completely focused on that. You, you mentioned earlier about how long you've been in the Big Ten three decades now. It's obviously seen a lot of changes and there's going to be more changes coming up. What, what are your just your general reactions, thoughts on how this league is growing and, and other leagues are growing as well in terms of what it does for the Olympic sports, like, like your sport in particular? Well, for us, we're adding two teams um, from the Pac-12 that have won national championships in the, in the last couple of years. And obviously, Washington and Oregon um, have, have been very successful as well. So I look at it, um, I know some coaches uh, and I've heard some comments from some ACC coaches that they, they don't want people to come in. I actually like it because it makes us better. Um, one of the reasons why we played the games we did this weekend was to see what we do well and what we need to get better at. And those games expose that um, and allows us to get better. And I think that you know, bringing those teams in from the Pac-12 will only make us better as a conference because the more your team is in those games and they learn what the effort and what they need to do to be successful, it only grows the, the, the conference. And so I'm excited about it. It's obviously a big challenge, you know, travel. And I think everyone that's already talked about it is going to be a challenge. Um, but, uh, you know, those teams really allow us to, to raise the standard for the whole, the whole conference. Just in that regard, how much of a concern is the potential travel, and do you have any suggestions for how y'all can handle that in terms of kind of limiting the amount of times you have to go out to the West Coast or West Coast teams have to go to the East Coast or anything like that while also having a feasible schedule? I don't think I get paid enough money to know how to figure that out. I think there's people who are smarter and brighter that are going to have to figure that out as we go along. I know one thing that I like, and it's probably not answering the question, but I like that I'm in the middle of the country. I'm not one way or the other. When I moved here, um, you know, I realized I'm not really ever on red eyes too often if red eyes are three hours. So um, I think the travel is going to be a little bit tough. I think there's some plans in the work to figure out how we divide that up a little bit. I think the teams that are more concerned are the coast teams. Um, that will be a little bit more challenging. But um, I, th I think because of the way 
we can't play game after game after game after game and that we have to spread out our games. I think those ways to figure it out that that travel can be mitigated a little bit. But it will be a challenge. I don't think anyone can uh, beat around the bush about that. That's what it's going to be. So. My biggest thing is come out if you want to see fun soccer and a team that's getting better, especially for the young girls out there after the World Cup. There's such a such a buzz about women's soccer and what they can do. If there's 98,000 people at a women's soccer game, you know we can get a lot of people out to our game to see some fun players who will have pro, pro, pro careers moving forward. So if you want to see some of those players, come out on Thursday.